Brain tumors specifically are very lethal. So 80% of them are malignant, and the median survival rate has remained constant in the past 30 years. It's about 14 months, and it's important for us to try as mathematicians to give as much information as possible to doctors so that they can treat uh, the patients with the best, you know, best treatment plan. When a patient comes in, they'll initially come in with some, you know, a symptom, usually a headache, maybe a seizure or something. So the patients will immediately have an MRI. From that, they'll see that there's some abnormality, and so then they'll probably ask for some follow-up MRIs. But then what they have to do to get more data on that is that they actually have to go in and have a surgery. The full picture is not shown in the MRI. MRI just shows the, the areas that have massive tumor concentration. And so the doctor will not have the chance to see how much the tumor has infiltrated into the brain. And so the doctor doesn't know whether they should cut certain parts of the brain or they should do radiotherapy in those parts or not. So what we're trying to do is to help them get this picture. Each patient, they have to be treated, but it's really hard to evaluate if a treatment actually worked because you don't know what would have happened if you hadn't done that. But with a mathematical model that is calibrated to each patient's tumor growth kinetics, we can have some idea for that patient virtually what would have happened if treatment hadn't been administered. And so I think these untreated virtual controls are going to allow a new way to investigate whether therapies worked or not. Um, I think that the model also provides some intuition for which patients the tumor is really diffuse. So if they even take out what they can see, are they even getting enough of the tumor to, for it to even matter? And I think a math model can give them some of that intuition as well.